Now, in verse 5, Father, glorify me, please, together with yourself, yourself, very personal here, very close to God, with the glory which I had with you before the world began. You say, there you go. Jesus was alive with God before the world began. Therefore, he couldn't be fully human. That's a lie. This verse has caused more trouble than most verses for people who don't understand this. Glorify me now with the glory which I had with you. What they don't know is the idiom about, I'm mad about my flat, means I'm sad about my They don't understand that. Americans don't understand that English even. Or, uh, you know, pulling my leg. Go to a Japanese person and say, I'm pulling your leg. What? Language is tricky, and the devil knows that. You can have something with God, meaning you can have it as promised by Him. In your margin, you could write Matthew 6 1 here. Matthew 6 1, Jesus says, if you don't pray correctly, you don't have a reward with the Father. Present tense, right? You don't have any reward with your Father. Meaning, there's no reward laid up. You don't get the rewards of the future, we know that. You get rewarded when the kingdom comes. But you don't, present tense, you don't, Jesus said, you don't have a reward with the Father, i.e. stored up with the Father. You see the sense of that? Very easy. Now I'm showing you in the very same chapter that Jesus uses that past tense of the word glory to mean precisely what I said there. Go to verse 22. Jesus is still praying. He's here praying for you. He's praying here for people who weren't even born. They weren't even born. He says, I'm praying not only for your apostles, but I'm praying for the Tracys and the Sarahs and the others who aren't even born. That they all be one, as the Father and the Son are one. The glory, then, he says, of these people, of Matthew, our Matthew here, wasn't even born. Jesus said his word. The glory which you, God, have given me, I have given to Matthew already. He wasn't even born. This man. Matthew in our congregation. I have given, he said in AD 30, to Tracy the glory which you gave to me, that they all may be one as you and I are one. Verse 24. Father, I desire, this is verse 24, skipping ahead, I desire that they also, whom you have given to me, you know that God had already given Tracy to God to Jesus, way back, past tense, I'm praying that they would be with me where, where I am, where I'm going to be, so that they may see my glory, which you have given to me. You see, it's all, you've given the glory, but I haven't got it yet. You see that? This is future glory. I want them to see the glory of my kingdom. That hasn't come yet. He's praying here for Tracy, who wasn't even born yet. This is a very Hebrew way of thinking. It's all so certain in God's plan. So the right translation of this text would be in verse 5, glorify me now with yourself personally, glorify me with the glory which I had with you, not yourself there, but just with you in your plan. To have something with you is to have something in your mind, and you can show that, it'll take a while to show in the book of Job, to have something with God, like the word was with God means the, God, the word was in God's mind, well, that's easy. Once it's explained to you, but if you read this as an English speaker, if you insist on being an American English speaker or British English speaker, you're going to misunderstand that. What do you mean, I have the glory? What part of the word have don't you understand? Ah, you've got to read the whole of the New Testament. All well, the rest of the Bible, we know that Mary had a baby. We know that Mary did not take in the pre-existing God the Son. We know that God the Son is not in the Bible anyway. So they're reading the whole of the Trinitarian thing into this verse 5. If you wanted in your margin, you could put Isaiah 55 and verse 5. Isaiah 55, verse 5, which says, speaking of future prophecy, Behold, you will call a nation you don't know. Speaking of people in the Davidic covenant, you are going to call a nation which doesn't know you, and they will run to you. It hasn't happened yet. Because of the Lord, your God, 
even the Holy One of Israel, for he, God, has glorified <coughs> you. But at least will have glorified you in the future. See? All of which is to say that in God's plan it's all clear. Yet surely the justice due to me is with the Lord, it's in his plans. Number one for you, Galatians chapter 2, uh, it is to do with the wind in John 1 1. In Galatians 2 5, you have the word, the gospel, is to remain with you, that's to say, in your mind. So the glory which I had with you is that's Galatians 2 5. The glory which I had with you in 17 5 with John means the glory which I had with you as you planned it in your mind. Otherwise, you're going to destroy the rest of the Bible. That's the issue. That's the problem. We don't want to do that because that is not a, an honest treatment of Scripture. It's dangerous to twist the Scriptures. That would be a problem. Okay, so that's John 17, 3, one of the great unitary monotheistic statements of Jesus. And of course, in your margin, you've got Mark 12, 29, which says that Jesus agreed with the Jew that the Lord our God is one person. He's one Yahweh, not two. So try this one, your friend. You have to practice this, by the way. It becomes easier to do. Practice this with your friendly friends who would like to know more. You can say, okay, before we argue this, even in a nice way arguing, how many Yahwehs do you believe in? How many Yahwehs? Not how many gods, how many Yahwehs? And they'll probably say, well, one. You say, okay, let's say five. You believe in one Yahweh. All right, fine. Okay, so you're telling me the Father is Yahweh. Now you're telling me that Jesus is Yahweh. Oh, how many is that? Two. You just said you believe in one Yahweh. Now you're telling me you believe in two. You see what we're getting at here? There is no way that two will be one. You cannot make two into one. It's not going to work. Give up. It's not going to work mathematically. You cannot make two into one. Two X's is not one X. One X is not two X's. That's the, that's the bottom line here. We're, we're just showing you know, the, the chaos of tradition. And Jesus is very concerned about this. He doesn't just wink at all this and say, well, too bad, move on. Our task is to try to contribute to some point. Yeah. So what if you've got the wrong Jesus by believing that he's really God? Watch out. You don't want the wrong Jesus. That's dangerous. Issues of truth here are critical.